in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you. Mercy taught us how to dance, to celebrate with all we have, and we'll dance to thank you for mercy. Your glory taught us how to shout, we lift your name in all the earth, and we'll shout to the praise of your If you want to order it, you can. Uh, I'm not opposed to you ordering it. Uh, if, it's, if it'll help you learn more about what's going on in our world. Say it with me, in our world. How many know ignorance? Ignorance is the greatest weapon the devil has against the church. If, if you don't know why you serve the Lord, if you don't know if you don't know what's really going on or happening, the devil will always mess you up. He's going he's gonna to come and take you down by that. Listen, don't be ignorant. Get, get that book. I don't have, a, I don't have a, a problem with you ordering it. It's called Tomorrow's World. Uh, man, it comes out of North Carolina. You can order it, and, and it's got a lot of prophecy in there. That'll, that'll talk to you about what's going on in the world. Amen. Are you with me? The news and all that will tell you all this. But, but how many know we, we cannot be ignorant to where we're at in the Lord and what's happening in our time? We've got to know where we're at and what's happening. We're so close, listen, to the coming of the Lord. Amen. How many believe that there, there this morning? We're so close to the coming of the Lord. Amen. So I want you to go with me. I want you to go with me to the book of uh, Judges. We're going we're gonna to go there for just a moment because the book of Judges talks to us about something because I want to say this to you, church. You need to, you need to listen to me and hear me. Uh, if there was ever a time God needs you involved in the work of God. God needs you involved in the work of God. God needs you involved in reaching others for the Lord. God needs you, listen, I thank the Lord for some of the people here that have stepped up to drive vans, to drive the buses,
to drive whatever they need to, to go pick up people and bring them in. I thank the Lord for that. I believe God is in this. I believe God is putting all this together. And then I thank the Lord because every Sunday morning and Thursday night, uh, we're able to feed these people. How many know it's expensive to feed over 100 and some people, 200 people every, every time they come? But God has made a way. He's provided. I thank God for Tom and Sue. Sue's over here on this side this morning. Uh, but I, oh, Tom, I thank God for them. They, they, they bring a lot of, a lot of uh, food that, that the homeboys make to feed these people. There's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. And I thank the Lord for them because God has used them to, to supply for, for these people. I mean, the homeboys... And the homeboys cook it. Amen? Give the Lord praise. But, but there's still so much to do. Imagine how many loved ones you have that don't know the Lord. It, it, it just, just think about it. How many people do you know that are far from God that, that you ought to be praying for, that you ought to be... You know, how many know prayer is a lot of work? It's a lot of work. It's not, not easy. It's a lot of work. But let me tell you something. It's worth it. The dividends of what you invest in the Lord is worth it. Are, are you with me? Anybody home? When you invest your time in the things of God... God will bless you for it. Are you with me, church? So I want you to go with me. We're going to go to Judges chapter 4. We're going to try to go through this kind of quickly because this is very powerful. Judges chapter 4 and 5 is very powerful. Okay, it's talking about Deborah. Deborah was a prophetess. And, 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 and she's there, amen, uh, at, the, at the time when there was a war that broke out. The enemy was trying to stop God's people, trying to hinder them, trying to push them back from moving in the Lord. And, and, and God had to get involved. Deborah was a prophetess. Amen. So, so let, let's, let's read this with me. Amen. And, and then we'll, we'll go on from there. From verse 1 down, he says, But after Ehud died, the Israelites again did evil in the sight of the Lord. How many know, look at me. It is evil not to care. Is there anybody hope? How many understand that? It is evil only to concentrate or think only about you and not nobody else. It's evil. Is there anybody home with me? You know, David Wilkerson one day said this. He said, the greatest sin the church commits is the sin of unbelief. We don't believe it. We, we just don't. We, the reason a lot of people don't care is because they don't believe it. See, if you don't believe in something, it doesn't matter to you. But when you know the truth, the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Oh, you better give him a better clap than that. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? So, so you and I, you and I have got to understand that we're living in an hour, the time, the time frame you and I are living in. This is an exciting day, an exciting time to be living because God wants to use every one of us. All of us. See, and one of the lies the devil has used is that, well, I don't know how to do anything. Well, I don't know if I can, you know. Uh, you know, I always mess up. I always fail. I always, that, that, those are all cop-outs. Listen to me. You're not going to be doing it. God's going to be doing it through you. Amen. 
Praise God. Reach, reach out, reach out to the lost. Bring the lost in. Bring, bring them in. We have a, 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 my niece back there. She just became a grandma. Yay. Hallelujah. But look what it says. Look at verse 2. So the Lord said to them, sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan. Now look at me. Whenever the church just sits back, sits down, and doesn't move, doesn't do nothing, the enemy comes in. You don't understand, in their days, the enemy was physical. In our days, he's a spirit. He's a spiritual foe that's come to destroy the church. He wants he wants you not to do anything for God. He wants you to, to, to just be, be worthless in the body of Christ. I'm telling you today, that's not the Lord's will. Are you with me, church? I said, that's not the Lord's will. Wherever you are in life, wherever you work, wherever, there's people that need God. Everywhere. So look at this. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Caesarea, who dwelt in Harosheth Hagolim, fortress of the city of the nations. Then the Israelites cried to the Lord, for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron and had se severely oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Now look at me. We're, we're going into a new year. You want to go into the same thing you just had? How many want a better new year? Oh, you better give him praise. Okay, but look at me. But God, God wants you to have a different New Year, a better New Year, a more prosperous New Year, a, a, a New Year where people will come to God like never before. Now look at me, look at me. But, but he's not going to take you by the hand and move you. Come on, he told, you know, no, he's not going to do all that. You know, you're, you're waiting for a dream. You're waiting for, for something to happen. Esto es tu esposo. Yeah. Bienvenido. And, you know, can you imagine, can you imagine, uh, you know, uh, we're waiting for God to do something. A lot of people, look at me, a lot of people have received a word from the Lord telling them he's going to use them. So they just sit back and they say, okay, I'm just going to wait on God. And, and, and the Lord is saying, wait a minute, I don't want you to just sit down, I want you to move. You see, if, if all you do is sit down, then nothing happens. Nada. All right? Uh, Dolly's teaching a class right now on, on, on casting out devils. Because the church needs to learn to do that. We're living in a devil-infested uh, time. And, and look, look at this. Look at me. But what would it be if the class showed up and he was just sitting there looking at you doing nothing? We can't do that. You got to give God something to work with. Say it with me. I got to give God something to work with. If, if you don't give God something to work with, then, then listen to me. You, you find yourself, you'll find yourself stalemating, just sitting there and, and dying spiritually. You've got to move. You've got to do something. Hello. Hello. And I'm not saying just go shopping at Walmart. Huh? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So look at this. Let's go on. 
Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidoth, judged Israel at that time. Deborah was a prophetess. She judged Israel at that time. Let's go on. She sat under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh and Ephtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you... Go gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 men from the tribes of Nephtali and Zebulun. Has it God told? Look at, look at me. Look at me. Well, I, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting on the Lord. And the Lord said, well, I'm waiting on you. When are you going to move? When are you going to start doing? You know, when I, when I got saved, when I got saved, I... Man, I, I started moving. It, it, was, it was in me. Come on, how many, of you, how many of you were slothful in the world? How many of you were dope fiends? How many of you were drug addicts in the world? How many of you were alcoholics? How many of you like to, come on, drink that, that ugly bud and that Coors and that? Come on. Huh? Now look at me, look at me, look at me. And none of you, all of you want to play angel now. But, but, listen, but listen to me. You know, how many of you like to smoke that dope? Uh, you, you like to roll them doobies, them bombers, you know? Look, look, look over here at me. And you didn't sit still. You know when you were running low, you were going to go get more. You were moving. You, were, you, you had to move. Oh, uh, you're not hearing me. But, but, but look at me. We get saved, and we just want to sit down. Ah, oh, let the Lord carry me. Where do you want me to go, Lord? Take me there, Lord. You know, no. Listen, I didn't know what God wanted me to do. I just knew there was something I had to do. And, and I started, man, I started cleaning the church. I started vacuuming. I started cleaning the toilets and the bathrooms. I'd pray over the seats, Lord, the, whoever sits down in this toilet, convict them of their sin. Lord, I, I was praying like that. That's what I would pray. And then after a while, I was teaching a Sunday school class. The little kids. I didn't like to teach little kids, brother, because I could, I could relate to those little kids. But I got in there, man, and man, they tore me apart. <laughs> but somebody had to do it. Amen. Then, then I went from there to the youth, youth class, and I started climbing by the time I knew it, I was a Sunday school director. And I started climbing up. Come on, is there anybody here with me, church? Listen, listen, some of you tell me, some of you say, well, I feel like God's calling me to, to be a pastor or a minister and all that. But, but, but listen to me. He, he's not going to call you without preparation. You got to do something. Wow. And then I, then, then I started preaching in the church. I started ministering in the church. And, 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 and then the Lord, Lord opened the doors of the jails and prisons, and I started going to the jails and the prisons, and I was preaching in there. Is there anybody here with me? And, uh, well, how, how did that happen? Well, because I started down here with the toilets. Uh, is there anybody with me? You know, you got to start somewhere, church. You got to give God something to work with in your life. You can't, you can't just, you can't just expect everything to happen for you because you want it to happen that way. It, God has a purpose for every single person that's in this building right now. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So look at this. Let's go on. And I will draw out Caesarea, the general of Jabez's army, to meet you at the river Kishon with his chariots and, and his multitude, and I will deliver him into your hand. This is God speaking through her to, to, this, to this commander, telling him, listen, 
If you will get your men, if you will get your people, rouse them up, get them going, get them moving, we're going to see victory. Hey! Say it with me, victory. We're going to see it. We're going to see God move like never before. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? So look at this. And Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. Can you imagine the attitude that that guy had? Look what, look what she told him. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Because everybody wants everybody to recognize them, but nobody wants to do nothing. Wow. What a trip, huh? Where'd your husband go already? Oh, with the kids praying? Oh, Lord. Good. And look at, look at verse 9. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the trip you take will not be for your glory. You're not going to get the credit then. This morning, I was able to give Sue and her husband credit for the food they bring and all that, because they do it. They bring it. And, and, and some of the van drivers that are here, Edmund's going to start driving, and different things, and I heard about it already, and, and, and different things like that. Listen, listen, I can give them credit because they jump in there and, and do it. And I, is there anybody here with me, church? We, we got to move. Say it with me. I got to move. If I expect God to move with me and for me, I got to move too. Now, now look at this. Church, Sunday night, church. Well, what do you expect? You're a Christian. When you were out in the world, listen to me. You knew what you were going to do. And you didn't tell yourself, again? No. Come on. Am I right, brother? No, you didn't. Oh, here I go again. No, man, you were, man, you were gung-ho, bro. You were ready to do whatever you needed to do. Why is it different with the Lord? Why is it that you find it more difficult to move for God? It shouldn't be. It ought to be easier because you got His power. You got Him living inside of you. Are you with me today, church? Are you, are you here? This is, this is this, I, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you by telling you what I did because you got to give something to work with in your life. If you don't give God that to work in your life, you're not going to have nothing. You're not going to get it. You're going to stay sitting. Brother, you come to church and I don't know. But call them up and say, you want to go to Walmart? You want to go to the Mexican mall? Psh. Am I right, brother? We ought, we ought to be reaching the, this. We ought to be reaching Denver, Colorado. We ought to be reaching Lakewood, the metropolitan. We ought to be reaching up for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Brother, there's a lot of people out there ODing on, on fentanyl. They're, they're, now they're bringing out a new drug, man, that's worse than fentanyl. And, 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 and our kids are dying through that. And all kinds of things are happening, brother. And, 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 and listen, the church has to rise up. The church has to say, you know what? It's time we reach these people for God. We, we got the answer. Their need 
We know what they need in their life. We got to give it to them. Oh, you better give the Lord, give him all the praise in the world. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Look at this, look at this, look at this. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. This was. And Barak called Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh, and he went up with 10,000 men at his heels, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber, the Kenite of the descendants of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had separated from the Kenites and encamped as far away as the oak is, 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 that's a big name, which is near Kadesh. And that's easier for me to say that than to pronounce that name. Yeah. Let's go on. When it was told to Syria that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Caesarea, Caesarea gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the men who were with him, and Horasheth Hagolim to the river Kishon. Now look at this. Look at me. We want, we want a, 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 to be able, I, I, look, at, look at me over here. I had a sister that went into a brother's uh, class, and, and there was a girl in there that were delivering from, from, from a devil. Were you there? And when she came out, she says, oh, I don't want, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be involved in that. Want, why not? Somebody, listen, listen to me. You don't realize this, but you were all devil carriers. We thought we right now. You think, oh no, man, I got, I'm, I'm all this and that. No, you, you, you were all devil carriers. Somebody prayed you through. Somebody prayed you in. Somebody did the work in your life. Got you delivered. From the hand of the devil. Oh, you better give him praise. And and and, and look, look at look at me. Look at me over here. And now it's like it's like we forget where we were at. We forget what he did for us. But it took somebody to care. You didn't get delivered by yourself. Look at this. All these men that come in the home, the women that come in the home, they didn't get delivered by themselves. Man, you, you, you weren't there when, 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 when they were spitting out devils and, 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 and all kinds of stuff out here. You weren't there. But, but look at them now, man. These girls look like they're, like they're secretaries for the CIA or something. Hallelujah. Look at them. They're, they're shining like a star. Look at these guys. Look at the, oh no, these guys still need to be polished. But. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody home? I said, is there anybody home? I mean, God's, God's waiting on you. He's waiting for you to move. Look at this. I want to hurry up with it because I want to take you to a place. Look at this. Verse uh, 14. And Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day when the Lord has given Syria into your hand. Is not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. Now look at me. Up. Up. That's a, a, a spiritual word that's saying... Get up from that slothfulness, that spiritual slothfulness, and do something. Move for the Lord. Move for God. 
But we want God to move for us. Come on, how many know? I have people come to me all the time. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I need the Lord. I, need the Lord. I said, okay, but, 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 but the Lord needs you. Oh! I said, wow, what happened here? You understand what I'm saying? This is not a one sided relationship. Mira, there's that couple right there. Uh, I love that couple right there. Look at, but look at this. Look at this. Uh, they're together. They go to church together. They worship together. They they pray together. They look at look at look at the, this couple right here. God's going to use them in a mighty way. But but look at me. But look at me. But look at me. What if she just did it herself and not him? It's hard. Is it hard? It's difficult. Because listen, you gotta you gotta realize, listen, I'm serving the living God. Is he real to you? Is he real in your life? He's got to be real to you. We're serving the real God. We're serving the God of heaven and earth, church. This isn't about, about statues or anything like that, or, or stories or myths or anything like that. We're serving the Lord. This is real. Say it with me, this is real. I got to move. And if when I move, Say, when I, when I move for God, God, God will move for me. Do you believe that? Yeah. Let's go on. Let's go on. I want to try to hurry here because... Uh, look at that. And the Lord confused and terrified Assyria and all his chariots, drivers, and all the armies before Barak with a sword. And Assyria alighted from his chariots and fled on foot. Now look at this. He's, a, he's about to die. This man's about to die. And he was, how many know, the devil, the devil will be defeated when you and I decide to do something. Brother, Pray for my family. Yeah, okay. No, we're going to pray for your family. But are you praying for them? Well, I don't have time. What do you mean you don't got time? Cut some of that stuff off. Oh, man. Lord Jesus. Are you with me here today? Mira, 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 mira. But Barak pursued after the chariots and the army to Hesoreth, Hagolim, and all the army of Caesarea fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Now I want you to go to chapter 5. I want you to see something with me. Chapter 5, okay. Now I want you to see something with me because this is, this is real. This happens. They were calling all the, all, the, all the children of Israel, all the Christians. They were calling all the church together. Come on, it's time to move. It's time to do it. It's time to get up there. It's time to bring the souls in. It's time to reach the lost. It's time to do something for God. It's time, come on, it's time to clean the church. It's time to, whatever I need to do, Lord, I want to do it so I can, I can climb those stairs with you, Lord. I want to, I want to get higher and higher in you, God. Do you think, do you think God trusted me with four and a half million dollars in my hand, uh, amen, to buy this church for him, amen? When I, first, when I first started, he would have never trusted me. I had to grow. I had to climb that ladder. Hey! I had to fight, I had to fight devils, I had to fight enemies that came against me, I had to fight. Brother, listen to me, listen to me. You are no different, God wants to elevate you. 
He wants to elevate you. But listen, listen to me. You've got to want to be elevated. You got to want to grow. You got to want to, to rise up. You got to want to let the Holy Spirit have his way in your life and do a work in your life. It doesn't happen just to happen. Listen, you could have a calling in your life. You could have a, an anointing on your life. But if you don't move, if you don't get up from there and start moving for God, listen to me, that anointing and that calling will sit there and will do nothing for you. Oh, give the Lord praise. Brother, we're going in, we're going in, we're going into the new year, 2024. Listen to me. You got to tell yourself, I got to be different. I've got to do things differently. I got to get up from here in the name of Jesus. I got to, I got to work for God. Come on, is there anybody here with me this morning? I've, I've got to move for the Lord. I, I don't want. I don't want to just. I don't want to just show up to criticize. I don't want to just talk about people. I don't want to backbite anybody or anything like that. I. I want. I, I want to do something productive for the Lord Jesus Christ. Ha hallelujah! Are you with me here today? We've got to rise up and move in the mighty name of the Lord. Are Are you with me, church? I said, Are you with me? In the middle of being occupied, this is what Jesus said. When I come, will I find you laboring for me? Will I find you, to, or will I find you just kick back looking at everybody and criticizing people and, and backbiting them? And, and how, is, how is he going to find you? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo te va a hallar el Señor? Is, is there anybody here with me? Amen. You, you, you can't, listen to me, you can't live like that and expect to hear that spiritual trumpet that will go out one day. It's going to sound very, very, very not very far from now. That thing is going to sound. People will disappear all over the world. Amen. They're going to go be with the Lord. Are, are you with me, church? I don't know about you. I don't want to be here for the tribulation. Amen. I want to go with the Lord. We've got to move. Tenemos que mover por el Señor. Look at this. Then sang Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, on that day, saying, Let's go on. For the leaders who took the lead in, in Israel, for the people who offered themselves willingly, blessed the Lord, who offered themselves willingly. Listen to me. You don't have to be forced and, and coerced and, and manipulated. And you don't have to do a Brother, you ought to willingly, out of gratitude that you're set free, he delivered you from the hand of the devil. You were going to hell, and now you're going to heaven. Yeah. Lift up that name. Yeah. Willingly. Am I right, sister? Willingly. God has great things for you. And you watch. You're sitting here thinking, well, I'm just coming with Amber for a while. Lord. No, God's bringing you. You're hungry for God, and you're going to meet the real God. You're going to meet Jesus in a way you never met him before. Is there anybody with me here? Look at this. Let's go on. O oh, hero kings, give ye, O princes. I will sing to the Lord. I will sing praises to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you went forth out of Sire, when, when you marched out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens also dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped water. Let's go on. The mountains quaked at the presence of the Lord. Yes, yonder Sinai at the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel. 
We serve no greater. This is there's nobody greater than God. He's greater than anything in the world. And you ought to be glad. You ought to be glad that he's, he's even thinking of using you. You ought to be glad that he loves you so much that he set you free so that he could lift you up in this late hour. Are you with me, church? Now look at this. the after, after the days of Shem, Shemgar, son of Anath, after the days of Jael, meaning here, Yud, the, the caravan ceased. Travelers walked through the byways. The villages were unoccupied and rulers ceased in Israel until you arose, you, Deborah, arose, a mother of Israel. So they, man, they were so afraid, so terrified, they didn't want to do that until she got up and said, come on, it's time. Let's go. Let's move it. Let's move it. Look at this. Formerly, they chose new gods. Then war was in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel who offered themselves willingly. That word keeps coming up. Willingly, willingly, willingly among the people. Bless the Lord. Willingly. Say willingly. willingly. Let's go on. Tell of it, you who ride on white donkeys, you who sit on rich carpets and who, who walk by the way. Far from the noise of archers in the palace and the places of dry water, there shall, be, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the, his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord went down to the gates. Now look at this. Here's what I want you to see. We're going to start right here. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake. Utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead away your captives, you son of Abinoam. Mm. Then march down, the, the, the down march the remnant of nobles. The people of the Lord march down far for me against the mighty. Out of Ephraim they came down, whose root is in Amalek. After you, Benjamin, with your king, king's men, out of Machar came down commanders and lawgivers, and out of Zebulon those who handle the pen or stylus of the writer. And the princesses, now look at the she starts naming them. And the princess of Achar came with Deborah, and Issachar was faithful to Barak in the valley. They, they rushed down at the hills, but among the clans of Reuben were great searching of heart. Now, you know what they're saying? She said, she said, the people of Issachar, they, they, they went with Barak down there to the battle. They were willing to get involved with God. They were willing to start reaching the souls. They were willing to do whatever needed to be done so that they could get that job done for the Lord. But, look at this, but Reuben, he sat down, well, I don't know if I, I should. They were, part of the, they were part of the Christian team. And he's sitting down. Well, I don't know. Let me think about it. Wow. Wow. Our family's dying without God, and we're thinking about it. Wow. What a trip. That blows my mind. Huh? Let's, let's go on. Look at this. Why Reuben? Did you linger among the sheepfolds, listening to the piping for the flocks among the, uh, the clans of Reuben? There were great searchings of heart. They didn't move. They did not move. They, they, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Ain't that heavy? Ain't that, that's powerful. They wanted to be free. They wanted, they wanted the blessing. They wanted it, but they didn't want to, they, they didn't want to, Help the Lord get it. He's here, church. The Lord is here. Let's go on. Look at this. Gilead remained beyond the Jordan. And why did Dan stay with the ships? Asher sat still on the seacoast and remained by the creeks. 
These are, these are Israelites. These are Christians. These are people from New Hope Ministries that decided, well, we're just going to sit down and do nothing. Let them other guys do it. Let, let everybody else do the work. Have you ever heard a message like this? No, you haven't. Not in a long time, brother. You want to hear how sweet you are. <laughs> Instead of how sweet it is, huh? Okay, let's go on. Look at this. But Zebulon was a people who endangered their lives to the death. Naphtali did also on the heights of the field. These clans, these people, these Christians, they said, we're going to do everything we can because our families need to come in and we need to reach the, 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 the loss for the Lord. We need to get the job done. We, we need to pray. We need to get to prayer. We need to start working for the Lord. We need to start moving. Ah, oh, you better give him praise. Mira el hermano allá atrás. Lift up your hand, brother. El hermano, sí, levántelo, alto. The brother right there, that brother right there, he drives a van every Thursday and Sunday to pick up people. And the other day we were talking, and he says, I like, I like doing that. I like driving, helping people. Listen, listen to it. Look at me. The Lord has anointed this church, you, He's anointed you to do the impossible. You got to move. You, you got to get involved. You got to get involved. You can't, you can't just kick back and do nothing. Praise God. Uh, is there anybody here? Let's go on. Look at this. Look at this. The kings came and fought. Then fought the kings of Canaan at Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo, gain of booty they did not obtain. From the heavens the stars fought. From their courses they fought against Assyria. Look at me. When you move, God will move with you. When you decide, when you decide, I've got to do something for God. I've got to do something for Jesus, man. I don't want to just sit and do nothing. I want to move for the Lord. There are people, church, listen to me, every moment, Every moment, there's somebody going into eternity Amen. without the Lord. Every moment. Do you, don't you understand? God uses our efforts to do his work. Yes. Somebody says, well, we're not, we're not saved by works. We're not saved by works. Oh, stop all that nonsense, please. You've got to grow a little bit. Go, go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I think it's uh, verse uh, Let's, let's read from verse 4 down. Okay, I want to read it to you real quickly because some of us, some of us think, I don't got to do nothing. I don't gotta, I'm not saved by works. I'm saved by grace. Yes, yes, I understand all that. Are you with me? But, but he also saved you with a purpose. You don't throw the purpose out the door. Look at this. Look at this. But God so rich in his mercy because of 
because and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself. He, the same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly suffer by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Now look at me. There was nothing you could do to get saved. Nothing. He saved you out of his love and mercy. Okay? But let's go on a little bit. Let's read it on. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immensible, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor, and his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. Let's go on. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourself, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving. It is the gift of God. You did not get saved. Listen to me, because you, you did what you, you, you worked for it. You did. No, you can't get saved by works. You got saved by his grace and his mercy. All right? Praise God. Give him, give him a big clap. Give him a big clap. Come on. I had to bring this out. I have to bring this out because some of you are sitting there. Oh, I'm not saved by, by works. I'm not saved by... That, those are different works. They're totally different than what he's talking about. You cannot save yourself by doing anything. But after, say, say it with me, after I'm saved. After I've come to the Lord. Okay, look at this. Let's go on. Not because of works, not, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do, so no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. You can't save yourself. All right? But look at this. For we are God, now, here we go. For we are God's handiwork after you're saved. Say it would be after I'm saved. If, if that were true, that you can't, there's nothing you can do to be saved, listen, listen to me. I would be preaching here today. You think I like all the dirty looks and, 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 and everything? No, brother. I love you. Huh? But I do it because God called me to do this after I was saved. Huh? So look at this. For we are God's own handiwork his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, born anew, that, that we may, what? Well, nobody's saying that. Say it with me, that we may do. Everybody, come on, that we may do. Everybody again, that we may do. Okay, see, see we, we, it was hard to get that out of you. Huh? Look at this. That we may do good works. Huh? Which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. Now look at this. He says, He said, You could you could save yourself. There's nothing you could do to save yourself. I saved you by my grace, my mercy, all right? He said, but now that you're saved, now I want you to do things for me. Now I want you to get involved. Now I want you to help me reach the world. 
Now I want, come on. Is there, I want you to help me reach your families. I want you to help me clean the church. I want you to help me drive a van. I want you to, come on, he's saying. Come on, let's get him in. Let's bring him into the Lord. This church would be so packed this morning, but our bus broke down. We'd have a lot of people here from, from Venezuela sitting all over. ¿Cuántos son de Venezuela que están aquí? A ver, levanten su mano. Pónganse de pie, pónganse de pie. No tengan miedo. Muchas gracias. Give the Lord a big praise. Now, now, what do you think if I would have said, well, I'm, I'm saved by grace. I don't need to do nothing. I ain't going to go get it. I'm not going to do all that. I'm, nah. That's crazy. Ayó a la, a, la, a la persona que los invitó a la iglesia. Oh, aquí está la hermana. Yeah, they were waiting for you. Praise the Lord. Si les podemos servir en una cosa, me dejan saber. Okay? Are you with me, church? How many love the Lord? How many love the Lord? Do you, do you love him or don't you? To your home today. I know that the word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know him, today would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time. Amen.